Hey, what's up, Lakers? Today, we're going to talk about the art and science of flashcards. Super exciting stuff. I know right now um, you're all kind of floating alone, trying to figure out how to study for classes. Um, maybe you don't have those review sessions that you really started to rely on this year with your classmates and professors, or you're not necessarily getting as much in the way of study materials. So today we're going to talk about flashcards in a very specific way to use flashcards. It's going to help you with those study methods. All right, let's go. So let's spell it out just a little bit. Um, today we're going to talk about the art of studying. Uh, we're going to do kind of an intro to flashcards, why their design matters, when to use space repetition, why we want to combine that with flashcards, um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some ways that you can get in contact um, with us right now because you can't just pop into my office or come down and see some coaches or walk over and, and see the residential uh, success coaches right in your, your hall. So we're going to talk about different ways you can get connected. All right. So the art of studying, right? Sometimes studying is an art or in our example today, a sport. Let's go back to when you were a kid. The first time you tried something, probably you weren't that good, unless you were, and then that's pretty awesome, but also pretty unique and not kind of the norm, right? So you're not great at something the first time you try it, but you practice and then you get better and then you practice and then you get even more. Uh, good at the thing that you're trying to do. So think about the first time you tried to draw or throw a football or or draw something like a tree or a cat, you know, whatever. Um, it probably wasn't great, but you tried it again and you tried it again and you practiced and you practiced and you got better. So studying is the practicing. Your tests are the football. And that final grade is how tight you get the spiral, right? That's that's kind of the the, the big idea. Studying equals better grades. Practice equals better throw, better drawing, etc. So keep that in mind as we jump forward. All right. Different sk uh, skills are going to require different kinds of practice, right? And so flashcards are not going to work for every single subject that you're working on. They're not going to work for uh, you know every kind of test or project that you might have to to do, right? But we're going to focus on one form of practicing or one form of studying, and that's flashcards. But keep that in mind that flashcards aren't going to be the best thing um, for every single class. So if you try flashcards and you feel like it's not working out, one thing I always recommend is reach out to that professor. I was taking an honors molecular and cellular biology class in undergrad, and I was tanking. Um, I was using flashcards. And I went into office hours, I reached out to my professor and I was like, hey, this is how I'm studying. I'm putting in these many hours. These are the materials that I'm using. I'm just not sure why I'm not connecting. And he was like, don't use flashcards, try this method. And honest to goodness, my grade improved like the very next test just by switching up what I was doing. So if you feel like flashcards isn't what's working for you, go ahead and talk to your professor, talk about what you're doing, see if there's any changes that you can make. So let's really, really focus on flashcards. Is there a right way to make flashcards? Yes. Um, it's not just about bulk information. It's about making it retainable. What do I mean? Okay, so let's break it down. So um, I have three important rules for flashcards. Okay, let's zoom in on those. The first one is to draw a picture. And that is going to be linked to those folks who have tactile learning. Um, the cool thing about flashcards is you can really utilize all three learning styles, visual, audio, and tactile, if you work for it. And so the way we're going to talk about it today is so that you can learn by all of those things. So the first one, draw a picture, especially if you're a tactile learner. The second one is less is more, one term per one card. What, what do you mean? Okay, so the example we're going to use is coffee. That's one term, but coffee is going to have three different facts about it, which means that coffee is going to have three different flashcards. We'll break that down in just a second, but one term for one card. So if there's three terms, you're going to have three cards for your one topic. I promise it'll make more sense in a second. And mnemonic, be kidding me. Um, we're going to talk about hints and how hints can kind of help you in all of this. Moving on. So let's look at the front of the card. 
draw a picture, right? I've got coffee. I wrote it out nice and pretty. And I drew myself a little coffee to go cup because that is the first thing that pops into my mind when I think of the word coffee. Of course, I didn't write or draw that. I typed it using Canva, but you get the idea. Um, the first image that pops into my head when I think of coffee, I'm going to put that on there. Same thing if you're studying neon, maybe it's a, an open sign, you know, or if, if you're studying, um, you know, the frontal cortex, it prefrontal cortex, it's, it's you thinking, okay, Netflix, cause that clicks with that. Right. So whatever it is, um, you need to, to focus on, um, I don't know, something that clicks with you. And that's where that tactile thing comes in. So here's the thing, visual learners, you see coffee and the picture, there's a link, right? Tactile learners, you have that link from drawing the picture. Make sure when you're doing these flashcards, you're saying it out loud. You're not reading it in your head, you're saying coffee. And then, you know, you, you talk about what's on the back. Speaking of, let's look at what's going on in the back of the cards. All right, so like I said, less is more. One term per one card. There are three important facts for coffee. The first is coffee is a brewed drink prepared from roasted coffee beans. The second one is coffee can contain caffeine. And the third is coffee originated in Ethiopia, the plant, and the drink uh, originated in Yemen. Okay, cool. So let's break that down. The reason I suggest three is if you have all three of those in the back of one card, you can be like, all right, coffee. Coffee is a brewed drink that comes from roasted coffee beans. Um, it can contain caffeine and the drink was originated in Ethiopia and the plant originated in Yemen. You're wrong. You got the last fact wrong, but because you got the first two right, it makes that, that last, that third piece less important that you got it wrong because two out of three, right? That's awesome. No, you want to make sure that you're getting all of the information right. So what you can do, if we jump back to this first one, what you could say is, coffee is and then that's your your prompt to say a brewed drink made out of roasted coffee beans coffee can and then you can say contain caffeine and then coffee originated and you can say the drink originated in yemen and the plant originated in ethiopia and that's a great way for you to have those three separate cards making sure that you're getting all of those facts that relate to coffee so it's important to break it down so you don't miss those important steps all right so um, our, our last thing, right, we talked about the, the picture, the, the drawing it out for tactile learning. We talked about um, separating it, you know, into all of the different terms that can relate to the one topic. And now we're going to talk about mnemonic devices or other hints. So you don't always have to please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, if you remember that from uh, way back in math or now in math, honestly. Um, you don't always have to do that to remember something, but making up fun hints, it's a great way to help with recall. I still, from a third grade spelling test, will say wed, nest, day, and environ meant in my head when I spell those words. Come up with those little things that help. What works for you is not going to work for Billy Bob Joe over here. So don't be afraid um, to have different and unique um, mnemonic devices or hints or helpful things for recall. Okay, so here's a few different things you can use. We've got note cards. It's the old school paper classic method that doesn't rely on internet. If your internet's a little shaky, I would recommend those note cards. Um, you just want to make sure that you are focusing on the stuff that you're having trouble learning more than the stuff you've got down. Anki app. Um, that's a flashcard app. It's going to help you track your progress so that you can see what topics you're struggling with. Quizlet, we've all heard of that. It's an app or the website. You can test yourself through Learn or you can use Match and have studying feel more like a game and it's still going to track your progress. Brainscape. It's a no frills flashcard app, but it's going to focus on efficiency and learning. It adjusts to help you study more of what you need by tracking your prog progress. All of those things, right? The whole focus of that is tracking your progress. Why? Because all of those, including the original thing, the way they work best and why they work so well is they focus on spaced repetition as a way to help you learn more effectively and efficiently. Spaced repetition is what makes flashcards so effective, not just writing them out. So spaced repetition is a psychological term that focuses on helping you shorten the forgetting uh, curve. So as you're learning, it creates opportunities for you to continue learning and minimize your forgetting curve because of how you're studying. 
Um, basically, all of the easier concepts, you're going to study those less and just review them because you already know them. And it's going to really focus your studying on those harder terms that you're struggling with and you're not able to, to recall as easily as some of those other things. We're going to break it down on this next slide. Okay. So you want to have three different piles for your flashcards, an everyday pile and every other day or every couple days pile and then a once a week. Okay, we're going to start on Monday. Monday, you go through your everyday pile. You're going to go through it three times. Any card you get right three times in a row is going to move to the next pile. You're going to ignore that next pile on Tuesday. You're going to go through everything. On Wednesday, you're going to make sure that you remember what is in your every couple days pile. You're going to shuffle that back in and you're going to go through all those cards. Any cards from the every couple days pile that you get right three times in a row is going to move into the third once a week pile. Any card that you get wrong from every couple days is going to go back to the everyday pile. And any card from the everyday pile is going to go into the every couple days pile. I know it's kind of weird, but, but as you do it, it'll start to make sense. So you do Wednesday, Thursday, you're doing the everyday pile. We get to Friday. You're going to put in the every couple days and the once a week pile back into the everyday pile. And you're going to go through all those cards again. Any card that you get right from a once a week pile three times in a row, that's going to stay there. If you get one of those cards wrong once, even if it's two out of three, that card still goes all the way back to the everyday pile, everyday pile. And you're going to repeat that process for the next few weeks leading up to your test. This is really important. If you mess up, put that card back in the everyday pile because that means you don't have as good of recall as you need to um, for it to just be in the review pile. You need to review it a little bit more. So why, why does this work? Well, let me show you. So um, you want to focus on what counts, right? So this is the, the learning curve, all right? This is, this is your, your, your studying right here. So this is the forgetting curve, right? So you study it once, um, you haven't really learned or reviewed it that much. Your forgetting curve is a lot steeper and then as you start to study it more, it becomes less steep, right? And so eventually, um, when you hit, you know, the review, you know, you've got the, your test is day eight, right? You've been studying for this for a week. You have a lot less time for your, your curve to go down than when you reviewed it. So you want to, you know, when you remove materials that you already know and just review them, you create the space to allow yourself to learn the new, harder material. And that's the whole point. Um, you know, and so as as the curve is going up and you're, you're reviewing them more and you're learning more, you have less of an opportunity to forget. And that's why spaced repetition is so helpful with all of this. All right. Do you have any questions? If you do, please, please, please send me an email at ebrandon at lssu.edu or you can try the Laker Success Moodle page. If you're not already on there, let me know, send me an email. Um, I'm going to be checking the survey once a week. And if I catch any new names, uh, that survey that got emailed out to you twice a couple weeks ago, um, if I see any new names on that survey, I'll make sure that I add them in. Um, but if you haven't been added in and you can't find the survey, just send me an email, we'll get you connected. All of our success coaches, residential and commuter are on that Moodle. So definitely make sure that you use that and connect with them because they can help you with a bunch of different subjects as well. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you start using flashcards. And the most important part of flashcards is that spaced repetition. Give it a shot. The only thing that's, that's different about this is you can't start it two days before your test. Spaced repetition takes time to work, which means you have to plan ahead. But that's okay, because that just helps you in the long run. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll hopefully get some more tips and tricks out to you soon. See you later.